Okay. Um, okay. Thank you for hanging around for this one. Um, so I'd like to talk today about Event Store and Go. My name's Ken Faulkner. Um, day job, C Sharp programmer mostly. I wish it was Go. Um, but I use a lot of Event Store, which can be used for event sourcing. So I'd just like to go along the, the practical side of using this. Similar, <laughs> I have some Microsoft swag as well, but um, I will give the code out at the end. So it'll be more of a case of who can type the code out the quickest. We'll get the, <laughs> we'll get the four parts of the swag. So I'm not a person to talk about CQRS or DD or aggregate routes. There are far better talks already out there. Um, Google, Google that if you want a really good presentation on understanding that. I am not the person for that. What I want to show is purely using the event store product, which is an, used for event sourcing, um, and the Go language. So if you're after, I don't want to say theory, but it's sort of if you want the sort of the event sourcing specifics of it, hit, hit Google or NDC's had plenty of talks as well. Now, with relational databases, I know this isn't strictly true um, all the time, but relational databases are really good for storing what now looks like. So this is this is, these are all my tables. This is all my data now. But there are situations where you might want to be able to sort of like trace back from the beginning of time, well, the beginning of your application um, or your service up until now. So it might be a case of, this sales event happened, that sales event happened, this happened, that happened. You might need um, sort of like basically a, a detailed history of everything that's happened as opposed to just purely now. That's where um, event sourcing or event store comes in. So think of it, like I say, as a stream of immutable events. Now, apart from having the, the full history there, one or there, there are two things that I found very, very useful with this. Um, if you're in an industry that requires auditing, so you might be in finance, you might be in medical, you could be just anywhere where some authority will come around and say, give me every event associated with like, not literally the universe, but so everything to do with these sales events, we need to see everything, we're going to audit you. Fortunately, since the whole event store is event, 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 it's a case of it's very easy to generate those and be able to hand over, hey, Mr. Auditor, here's the data you want, go away. Um, that's, a, that's one benefit. But to me, the single best benefit of this is being able to replay all those events from the beginning of time onwards. So initially the business might've said, oh, okay, we're going to build functionality A, B, and C. Go off and do it, developers. Okay, so we go off and do that. We've used event store as a sort of source of truth. And then six, 12, 18 months later, they come back as the business always does. Actually, we'd also like functionality D. Uh, it would be really good if we'd had that to begin with. Um, so it's, sort of, it's using the same set of data, but they're doing a different computation or maybe, maybe it's just a fix. Um, but more often than not, I've found, hey, we'd also like this. I wish you'd told us that before. Now, since, we're able to, since we've got every single event that has happened, we're able to code up um, this new piece of functionality that takes all the events and there's your answer. And so you can actually just replay every event and it is as if it existed back then. So you run through the millions, billions, tens, if you're not busy, um, of events and there you've got your answer. And so being able to just add extra functionality as if it is, was there from the beginning. That to me, from a, a practical point of view, that has been one of the, the real lifesavers, been really good. So what I'd like to show you is just the amount of code is tiny, but how to generate events into event store and how to process the events or how to read them. So code time. So, oh, now before I do, how do I read this? Okay, cool. So hopefully you're all seeing command prompts at the moment. I just want to show you um, how to start up event store and I've got nothing up my sleeve. I have a nice empty directory here. Now, when you run event store, 
Now, we, to install event store, just go to eventstore.com.org or Choco, however you want. When you run it, okay, in this case, I'm saying, okay, my database is in current directory, my logs are in current directory. So I run that. It goes off, it starts creating some base information, and it's now got the service running. So if I look at that, it, it's gone off and created some stuff for me. Now, one nice thing it does as well is it uh, supplies a web interface. Let me just reload this. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Okay, forget about all this. This is not what we're going to cover. What I want to have a look at is just the stream of data. So at the moment, when I started up that um, uh, event store, it created some users and all that, but it, it, it's got no data. I haven't added anything into it. So I just want to show you this interface. We'll come back to that in a second. So we're going to create a producer and consumer, really basic stuff. So I'm either going to make the assumption that you know Go, or the syntax is simple enough that you'll get the idea regardless of the language that, that you know. So first thing, and it, this is really is minimal code, I create a uh, producer event store demo structure. And if I have a look up here, I've got a connection to event store. That's all that's there. There's really not much to it. Then I call Spamageddon, which is just my producer. It's just going to keep making stuff. Now, when I ran event store a second ago in the command line and I said it created a user, one of the first things it does, it creates an admin user with a password change it to subtly remind you, okay, go off and change this. Uh, we're running on localhost, that's the port. And default is just the name of the stream that I'm going to use. You can have as many streams as you want. So it's not like you're intentionally mixing up sales events and Windows events and these events and that events. You can split them all up however you see fit. Or you could dump them all in. If you like chaos, you could dump them all into the one stream if that's what you like to do. So let's have a look at spam again. There are three parts to this. this. These first two parts, these are boring. Um, all it really is doing is taking my parameters and creating a connection string. So it's going to be TCP, username, so admin, change it, localhost port. That's it. So that's just creating the connection string. That's using the connection string. That is really bog standard um, boilerplate. So I don't want to go into that. Uh, and all of this is on my GitHub account. I'll give you a link afterwards. Now, what we do, we loop 10 million times just for the sake of this demo. We generate a random payload, which is just JSON. It's just a string. I add it to a new event, um, giving it an ID, just a, a GUID, and I append it to the string. So it really is generate JSON, wrap it in this class that um, event store is expecting, and attach it. Um, generate random payload, just to show you. Um, I generate, so I'm creating something with a department and an amount. Uh, so I've got four random um, departments. I'll just pick one of those. And then an amount between zero and 100. You generate the JSON, dump it into event store. So if I have a look at, so I'm just going to run that now. Okay. So I haven't bothered producing any output there. But if I go back here, I now have a default stream. I click on that. Oh, yeah, actually, one thing I should say is at the end of that loop, I sleep for a second. And then I'm just going for my 10 million. So at the moment, it's just chugging along. I've got a department of sales ID 1, amount 31. They're just, we're just getting all this random, random data there. So I'm just going to leave that running. The generating events to me is boring. What I like to do is all the events that we've got different systems writing into event store, what, what um, business value, what new piece of functionality can we get out of, the, uh, out of this? Because it's amazing sometimes what data will get in there, and then it's a case of, wow, we've actually got the data produce something tangibly useful for the business. But anyway, consume, uh, producer, that's just running. Let's look at the consumer. This is the more fun bit. Same sort of stuff. I create a consumer event store demo. That's just got a few... Important things here, it's got a connection, same as the producer, and it's got a subscription, which is it's subscribing to the default stream, and every time something happens there, it'll pull our function. 
but admin change it, localhost, same port, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go back up to here. This is a copy and paste of the other bit of code. So I create my connection string and use it. Boring. This is the interesting part. So now we're going to subscribe to the stream. So the stream name is default. Now, when we subscribe, we can tell, okay, where do we want to subscribe from? Where do we want to start? Do we want to start at event zero, which was written seven years ago and it's got way too much data, or do we want to start somewhere else? Now, in this case, I'm starting at event zero for the purposes of the demo. Practically, what you're probably going to do is every time you process an event, you're going to, okay, yep, we're processed, we've done this. You're going to write to a persistent storage somewhere saying, oh, I got to event 1 million. Uh, and so when the, or if the server restarts or it crashes and it needs to restart or whatever, um, next time it starts up, it'll know, oh, well, I've got up to a million. I'm going to continue on from 1 million and 1. But in the case of what I was saying earlier, where you might create a new piece of functionality and you really do want to start from the beginning of time, this is where you say, nah, we're going to start from zero. Once we do that, so we're saying we're going to start, a, um, we're going to read the default stream, we're going to start from zero. Every time an event comes in, we're going to call a function called process event. Very simple function, and this one's super complicated. We read the data, we unmarshal it into a sales event. Now, we scroll up here. Sales event, it just maps what I had in the JSON. So we've got a department and an amount. Uh, we take that and we print it out. That's a super complex bit of functionality. So if I run this, since I've told it to start from event zero, what you'll see is it'll quickly go through everything really quick and then it'll catch up. So it went through everything that consume, a producer had already created. And now it's actually just sort of in lockstep with it's it's consuming the stuff as soon as the producer makes it. So that is sort of that is a very simple thing to do. Now, just say the business comes along and says, actually, no, we just want totals of the sales. We don't care about those other events. That's for another department. We need to know about the total sales. So what we can do, and again, this is just trivial code, but I just want to sort of dem demonstrate the point of oh, okay, if our department was sales ID zero or one. Let's go process a sales event. And here we just, we're going to take a running total of the, the sales event. So the, the other ones, they're ignored for the moment. We don't care about that. So if I rerun this now, you'll see that, okay, again, it'll rush through all the events that were happening. And now it's actually caught up. And now it's just taking into uh, paying attention to the sales events. And being able to just sort of create these, again, this is a trivial example. But being able to create the new pieces of functionality um, that will go off and add business value, it is, I, I love this product, sales pitch. Um, <laughs> let me just, okay. So generating events, extremely easy. Oops, too um, Very easy to add consumers later on. It is one of, to me, one of the biggest strengths being able to do that. Comparatively low on resource requirements. So for my day job, we've got a cluster of three uh, event store nodes. So you've got a quorum. Um, we're sitting at like three to 5% CPU on those things. Um, yet sometimes it's under sort of like, we're hammering it with lots of events, but still it is, it is very, very good from a resource point of view. But what I've shown you is the older version of, G, um, of Event Store. Now, the reason I haven't shown you the newer version, which came out this year, is because all the client code is gRPC, as opposed to just sort of bog standard TCP, or comparatively raw TCP sockets. The Go client, or the official Go client, isn't out yet. Um, I think it's supposed to be out soon, but I, I keep hearing different dates. There are the proto files there, so you can generate your own client if you would like to. But personally, I'm just going to wait for the official client to come out. That way I've just one less thing to maintain. I don't have to maintain the client and my actual real code. Um, but yeah, ho hopefully that will be out um, soon. So that's, that's basically it. All I want to really emphasize is 
try it out. If you are into or want to dip your toe into event sourcing, um, it's great for some situations. It's not great for other situations. It, if you want to try it out, it is so easy to just sort of like dip your toe in the water and, and give it a go. So uh, if you want to try it on Azure, we run all our stuff on Azure. So these are the same links um, as shown earlier. If you're interested in anything uh, Microsoft dev-wise, please join the community newsletter. Go to this link if you want the swag and you will be asked a secret code, which is Ken F21. The first four people there, now you've all stopped listening, I'm sure, and you're now just trying to click on links. Um, first four people to do it uh, will get the swag. Uh, this presentation and the code that I'm using is uh, at my GitHub, so KP Faulkner, NDC Sydney 2020. And I hope you have learned something from it. Um, on to the next person.